Welcome! Welcome to the Studio Theatre Tierra del Sol's virtual play reading series. I am Nathaniel Nimi. I am the director in residence at the studio and the director of today's piece, which is Lysistrata, adapted by Bobby Bell. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to give a little content warning here. This is probably rated about a PG-13, um, and some of the content may not be suitable for young ears. We've got a little, uh, some innuendo and sensuality going on uh, in Lissa Strada. I want to thank Bobby for letting him use uh, his adaptation. I want to thank our team working behind the scenes to put this recording together. And I want to thank our cast for being here. And I want to invite you to join us for a talk back uh, after, after the show. Uh, you can join us on Facebook Live and we'll be there to answer any questions that you have. And now I want to invite you to meet the cast. So the cast of Lysistrata. Come on down. We have Mary playing Lysistrata. Hi everyone. I'm an actor and a mom. You might hear the baby from Los Angeles, California. We have Rachel playing Kalaniki and Lashes. Hey everybody. I'm an actor in Orlando and sometimes I'm a mermaid. We have Roberta playing Marina and Stromadoris. Hi, everyone. I am an actor, director, and educator here in Orlando. We have Heather playing Lampito and Philurgis. Hello from Chicago. I'm an actor, director, playwright, and uh, professor. We have Sean William playing Rhodope and Kinesius. Hello, everyone. I am also from Chicago. I'm an actor and a writer up here. Sarah playing Stratalis and Hipponax. Hi friends, I'm Sarah here in Central Florida. I'm an actor. We have Bobby Bell playing the mayor. Hi, uh, uh, I'm Bobby Bell down here in Orlando. I'm a writer and sort of a theater artist. Allison playing Nakodaki and Harold. Hi, I'm Allison. I am an actor in Claremont, Florida. We have Lon Ward playing Drakis. Hi, Lon. I'm an old actor right here in the villages, Florida. And Boone playing Criddley. Hi, I'm Barb Abrams, also Boone. I'm an actor and I live in the villages. Fantastic. All right. My cast take places. And I want to invite you watching at home to relax, sit back, Enjoy a beverage, grab a friend, grab a dog, grab your disco ball, <laughs> and let's get groovy with Lissa Strada. The interior of Club Acropolis, an urban club from the funk era. It is decorated in funkadelic decor and colors. In the center stands a brightly lighted jukebox. We see bar areas with stools and a locked entrance to the VIP room. Whenever these doors to this exclusive area open, a heavenly light beams through. Lysistrata enters, staring at her watch and pacing back and forth. If my girls were asked to get down and boogie all night at some drunken bacchanalia, or if I had said, let's get high and fly around the room like Peter Pan, this place would be packed. But now, when there's important work to be done, there's not a woman to be seen. <sighs> hmm. Except for one, my neighbor, Kalaniki. What's up, sister? Good morning, Liz Estrada. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at that face. Why are you so worked up? I mean, I'm, a, I'm ready to give up on women. I mean, I told them to be here at nine o'clock sharp. I know men say that we're conniving and devious, but... We are <sighs> conniving and devious. Yeah, but... How would we ever get anything done? But when I tell them to meet with me on something important, they don't come. They'll get here when they can. It's, it's hard getting out for a woman. You gotta... Get your man out of the house for work. You gotta get the kids off to school. You gotta change diapers and feed babies and a hundred other things. I know that as well as anyone, Kalaniki. But this here is important. What's on your mind, Liz Estrada? Oh, it's big. Big? Yes, it's very big. 
Very big. Is it hard to? Extremely. It will be the hardest thing that they've ever seen. Very big and extremely hard. Mm -hmm. And I am with you, sister. I don't know why they aren't here yet. Oh, you. You have a one-track mind. This thing had me up all night. Up all night? (sighs) Forget the others. Tell me where to find this massive wander. We will need the others for the fate of our country rests with the women. With the women? Mm Mm-hmm. There's war abroad, and here at home, men fight with each other. That is true. The world is being torn apart by war and strife. We need peace. But what can we women do? Our men here in Athens have been fighting with the men in Sparta forever. What do we have except our goldfish platform shoes, sequin miniskirts, and see-through halter tops? Those are exactly the weapons by which my plan will work. Your club clothes, your makeup and perfumes. Really? Mm -hmm. Then let's go shopping now. No. Yes, I'm nearly out of Charlie and Patchouli. I'll explain better when the other ones arrive. A girl's night out shopping spree and they aren't here yet? Wild stallions wouldn't have kept me away. You don't understand. And I like my stallions. (laughs) You're late, Marina. I am not. You are too, I said nine o'clock. You said nine-ish. I never ish anything. I said nine o'clock on the dot. Well, I couldn't find the right outfit. That's no excuse. And I had to make my husband breakfast. That is no excuse. I tried to tell her. You shut up. And drop off the kids at daycare. Well, you're lucky. Your husband is home on deferment. Yes, but he's still out half the time mixing it up with the Spartans. A grown man. Fighting when he should be taking care of his loved ones. Let's go shopping. We'll all feel better. We are not going shopping. (laughs) Ever? You think I like it? No. But what would you give to change things? Anything. Anything, Marina? No matter the cost? I said anything. Well, we'll see. We still have one more woman essential to our plan. (sighs) Who is it? Yes, who? You'll soon see. Lampito enters. She is dressed in biker gear. Lysistrata! A Spartan? Oh, no. Run away. Hide. Jeez, what's up with these two? Knock it off. This is the woman I was just speaking about. The one who is essential to our plan to end the war. Lampito, welcome, sister. But why did you come through the back entrance? It's none too safe for a Spartan around these parts. Not that I couldn't take any Athenian wimp on my own, mind you. (laughs) Still, I thought it best to duck down the back alley and sneak through the window of the women's restroom. Lampito, let me introduce you to my neighbor, Kalanaki. Slap me five. (laughs) And this is a very influential woman in Athens, Marina. What's up? What biceps you have. Hey, easy on the merchandise, babe. (laughs) You don't want to start something you can't finish. Uh, You have the strongest legs I have ever seen on a woman. Well, in addition to the usual street fighting, I'm also an accomplished kickboxer. Lampito is as fine a physical specimen of the female form as you are like to see anywhere. Whoa. Now, while I ain't exactly opposed to no menage quadraphonic, (laughs) I risked life and limb to get here for what you told me was important business. And important business it is. What is this important business? Kalanaki and Marina, tell me truly. Is there any woman in Athens who does not hunger for the day when the war will be over? Very true. Truer words have never been spoken. And although the men may take some measure of delight in this petty fighting amongst themselves, is there not a universal thirst among women that the fighting with the Spartans end... Without a doubt. All we desire is peace. And don't you feel terrible for the husbands taken away for a foreign war? Don't you want to bring our boys back home? My love left me to enlist three years ago. You know the Spartans. Mine re-enlists as soon as his tour is up. And when he isn't fighting wars, he's back with the gang. Mm Mm-hmm. My husband's been away for half a year. And I wake up every morning worried to death that mine will lose his deferment. 
And even if they come back home, our fathers, our lovers, our husbands, and our sons come back to a country torn apart by factions fighting each other, rich against the poor, uptown against downtown, race against race. Every woman in Athens desires an end to war. Every woman there prays for peace. And as for our own pleasures, there aren't enough batteries in the world to last us the length of this interminable war and indefinite infighting. Mm, I yearn. Well, what shall we do? Well, Lampedo, even though the Spartan women have reputations as warriors, you have told me that they too desire peace. Right on. Power to the people. So, if I told you I have found the way to bring about peace, will you join me? Whatever it takes. I will sell every disco dress I own if I have to, and dump my perfumes down the toilet if need be. I would sacrifice my very life. You could cut me in two pieces if it would end the war. (sighs) And here's my plan. We will force the men to give us the peace that we want. All we have to do is give up. Tell us at once. All we have to do is give up. Give up what? We have to give up. What? What? Give up what? But will you do it? Yes. Yes, I just said I'd even die if I had to. We have to give up sex. What? No. Let the war go on. Kalaniki, you said that you'd sell at... Sell? Yes. Anything but give up that. It's the only thing that makes having kids worth it. It's not like I'm asking you to chop off an arm or a leg. But you are cutting us off from the best limb of all. I'd rather be fried in fondue cheese. Jermaine Greer is full of it. There isn't a eunuch among you. Men are right to label us the weaker sex. Well, what about you, Lampedo? Without your help, all is hopeless. A bed is a lonely place without a firm loaded piece ready to fire off a pleasurable round. But for peace, I am ready to make the sacrifice. Thank you. Thank you, sister. You are a true, true woman. But even if we do give up, giving up the goodies, (laughs) will that bring us the peace we desire? Totally. This is solid. If we just sit around home in our very best makeup and slinky nightgowns or go stepping out in our foxiest outfits and plucked and primped and perfumed, the boys will all be standing erect and at attention. And every day that we turn them down is a day closer to peace. This is true. In ancient times, men went to fighting for women like Helen and just as quickly turned to jello when they got one glimpse of her in her birthday suit. But if we refuse, won't some slutty Sue or disco Debbie just take our place? Not if all women band together as I believe they will. And that is why you must help me spread the word. In addition, I have another part of the plan. It better be good. It is, to the max. Where do all the men in town come to meet women? To the Club Acropolis. And where in the club do they go if they think they're going to get lucky? Uh, To the VIP room. And that is also where Draki is the club owner and wealthiest man in Athens keeps his office and his safe. What does that have to do with us? With the money in his safe, we could run a first-class protest. Plus, I've got the skinny. The Drakis has dirt on all the politicians in town in his safe. And that is how he's able to blackmail them to keep them out of the competition. So, whoever has the Acropolis safe has all of the power in Athens. Uh, I'm with Lampedo. What's that got to do with us? Guess who has the only key to the VIP room? Well, the Drakis. Not anymore. <laughs> Tripping. Where did you get that? That is not the uh. question. How did you get that? Oh, you know. A little weed, a little roofy, a lot of feminine wile. Oh, you did <laughs> it. <laughs> All for the greater good. Now, I have summoned some other sisters to come and help me occupy the club and start the protests. With your help, we will spread the word until we shut down all of Athens and Sparta with our sex strike. Then, 
that will spread into the entire country. And we women will not make love until there is no more war. Okay, well, what if my husband makes me? Makes you? Well, <laughs> I think you're making excuses. But even if you must yield to his advances, give him fish lips for kisses and limp arms for embraces. We women have a thousand ways to make a man miserable for every single way that they have to make us sad. (laughs) I promise you we'll have our men whipped into shape in no time. Well, not too much of the whipping. Yeah, they might enjoy it. (laughs) Before our female troops arrive, we four leaders should bind ourselves together in a sacred oath. Make the oath and we shall swear. On what will we make our oath? We are in the Club Acropolis. And here we'll stay until our terms are met. What better thing to swear on then? On good red wine. This is an oath I'd make twice. (laughs) That is a generous pour, Liz Estrada. I will down it with pleasure. (laughs) Do not drink a drop until you repeat the oath after me. Just a sip? Uh -uh -uh. It's so lusciously red. Not a sip, not a drip. Oh, all right. Now. Repeat after me. I swear. I I swear. swear swear. That I will have no man. That I will have have no man. 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 Be he husband or lover. Be he he husband husband or or lover. Kalonicky. Hmm. Well, not even a little teensy lover. No. Or lover. lover, no matter how flushed with love, no, no matter, matter how, how flushed, flushed with, with love, love, or erect with passion, or, or erect, erect with, with passion. passion. Okay, this is really too much. Be strong, sister. Or erect with passion. I will use all of my feminine attractions and skills of flirtation to arouse the male species. I will will use use all of my feminine feminine attractions and skills to arouse the male species. species. But no matter how much I may inflame them, but no no matter matter how much I may inflame inflame them, I will not bend my back to quench the fire. I will will not not bend my my back back to quench the fire. I will not raise pumps to paradise. I will not raise raise pumps pumps to paradise. paradise. I will not allow him to pet the puffy poodle. I will not not allow allow him him to to pet pet the puffy poodle. poodle. Or stroke the pretty kitty. Or stroke stroke the the pretty pretty kitty. kitty. I will resist all temptation to howl like a wolf. I need a cold shower now. Repeat the oath. I I will resist resist all temptation to howl like howl like a wolf. Or purr like a lioness. Or her, or like, like a, lioness. a lioness. And if I keep my oath, may I taste sweet wine and enjoy the pleasures of sex all my days. If I keep, if I keep my, oath, my oath, may I, may I taste, taste sweet wine, wine and, enjoy and enjoy the pleasures, the pleasures of, of sex, sex all, my, all days. my days. Amen. But if I break my oath, may I only drink foul water and may my love life be as dry as the Sahara. If I, if I break, break my, my oath, oath I may I only drink, drink foul, foul water, water and may my love life be dry as Sahara. Yuck. This oath, I swear. This, this oath, oath, I swear. I swear. Now drink. Oh, I feel mm. faint. Me too. And it isn't the wine. Lampedo, make your way back to Sparta and get your women on board. Meanwhile, Kalaniki, Marina, and I will break into the VIP room and, and secure Club Acropolis for our Athenian sisters to occupy for the protest. Right on. Fight the power. Lysistrata, Kalaniki, and Marina approach the door to the VIP room. Lysistrata inserts the key into the lock. She opens the door and a heavenly light pours forth. The ladies go up the stairs of the VIP room as the lights fade. The women of Athens begin their protest.
Drakis enters. He is the sleazy owner of Club Acropolis. He is dressed in a hideous leisure style jumpsuit with a wide open neck and plenty of gold chains. I demand you leave the Acropolis at once. Never! We'll never leave until our demands are met. Buzz off, you lounge lizard. Yeah, take a powder, you worm. Make love, not war! Make love, not war! Make love, oh, not war! shut up. Drakis rushes over to the VIP door and struggles to open the locked entrance. Open up. Open up. Unlock this door. You have no right to keep me out. Out, you'll stay until the fighting stops. No open doors for you or for any man. No open arms or open hearts. And especially no open legs. Make love, not war. Make love, not war. Make love. This is my club, and this is not ladies' night. You leave me no choice but to use force. You're such a tool, (laughs) Drakis. Yeah. The smallest tool in the box. (laughs) You don't frighten us. We're in charge now. If you don't let me in right now, I'll call in reinforcements. (laughs) Who will you call? All of the young men are out fighting. All you have left are a bunch of old geezers. You can't stop us. All right, ladies. You leave me no choice. Come on in, guys. The old men of Athens enter. They are all wearing hideous versions of funk-era club wear. They are carrying torches and a large pole to use as a battering ram. They collapse from the effort. This is too much like work. I'm beat. My bunions have grown bunions, and my aches have sprouted aches. I think I broke something. Come on, man, pick up that battering ram and go to work. (laughs) Couldn't we just... Ask them nicely first. Ask away. Please, let us in. Not that you put an end to the fighting. Oh, pretty please, with sugar on top. No, no, a hundred times no. But, but, and if you ask again, you'll get a knock on the noggin for good measure. That's not very nice. Make love, not war. Make love, not war. Make love, not war. I tell you, they're hysterical harpies. How dare you take over our club? Night after night, we brought you drinks and food, and this is how you repay us. Get down now. And let's get down now. Never. Now, run along before you get hurt, little man. Pick up the battering ram and batter down that door. The old men and Drakis grab hold of the pole and struggle to get it into position. Uh, I'm having a little trouble getting it up. (laughs) You're telling us. Are you sure it's stiff enough for the job? It never has been before. (laughs) Oh, you're doing it all wrong. That's what I usually say. They're all like that, all talk and no action. (laughs) I'm just gonna close my eyes and hope for the best. The old men lift the pole and then it droops. Oh, you can do better than that. (laughs) (laughs) Harder. Right? (laughs) Hey, I can use some help here. Don't look at me. Uh, You're just about there. The old men finally get the pole in place. Okay, men, on my count. One, two, three, charge. The old men and Drakis charge the door with the battering ram, but fail to make a dent in it with each successive attempt. Each time they bounce away, the women of Athens shriek in laughter. (laughs) After the last attempt, they drop the battering ram limply to the ground. (laughs) What's the matter, boys? Couldn't finish? 
Yeah, and I just kept banging and banging, and I didn't feel a thing. Me neither. Not even a headache. <laughs> All right, that does it. I don't care. I'll burn you witches out and collect on the insurance. What? I say you heard me. Okay, boys. Let's light up them torches and smoke them out. You expect those losers to light our fires? I've never seen one of them successfully flick a bick. Woo, I think they're serious. <laughs> Off to the powder room, ladies, and start the bucket brigade. The women of Athens exit and grab buckets of water. The old men of Athens and Drakis light their torches. The room turns a fiery yellow and red. Okay, men, light her up. The old men of Athens start to light the club on fire when the women of Athens come in with buckets and douse them. What is the meaning of this? Looks to me like you're all wet. Ooh, what have you done to me? Oh, we've just snuffed out what little fire you had. I'm drenched from head to foot. And there's plenty more from where that came from if you want to try that stunt again. This, this water smells incredibly foul. You're right. It smells like... We've been holed up in here for a lot of days. And dance clubs are notorious for having too few ladies' rooms. Ew. I'll have to go home and scrub with lye soap and a brass brush. This reminds me of a support group I used to attend. Oh, shut up, you. Make love, not war. Make love, not war. Make love, not war. The mayor enters, utterly dismayed by the drenched men and shouting women. What? In the name of six different psychedelic shades of colored stallions is going on? I got the situation under control. I saw more control during the acid trips at Woodstock. These screeching banshees have had their way for too long, and the men of Athens are to blame. We've been too lenient. A good smacking around is what they need. You, go get a crowbar and pry open this door. You, go near that door and I'll beat you brainless with this bucket. Uh, I just remembered I have a root canal I have to attend to. You're not a dentist. I'm going to go get one. Anything but this. Coward. Now, go get a ladder and climb up there and open that door. You come up a ladder and I'll send you down it with a broken nose for your pains. I can't. Why not? I'm afraid. Of heights? Of her. <sighs> Great piles of motoring anchovies. Are you all without the fighting spirit? I want you to get in there and give them all a good sound beating. I'll bite and scratch and dig your entrails out. You'll be singing soprano when I'm through with you. I... What? If it's all the same to you... Well? I'd prefer not to, sir. Why not? Are you a man or a mouse? Neither, sir. Well? I'm faint. Lashes passes out to Draki's arms, who sets him on the floor. <laughs> this is a fine how do you do. Not a single man to take on these miserable sniping birds. Well, I guess it's up to me. I'll break down that door and drag out that miserable wretch Lysistrata myself. Lysistrata enters from the VIP door. No need to force your way in. I want to talk to you sensibly from one person to another. There's no such talk between a man and a woman. <laughs> Drakis, tie that woman up and help me drag her out of here. Drakis, your honor, the mayor, before you lay a finger on me, I would take a moment to consider what trouble you might be bringing upon yourself. Nicodiki and Crittily have come through the doorways to stand on either side of Lysistrata. Rhodope and Stratilus have secured mop handles and toilet paper rolls as weapons. 
What are you afraid of, Drakis? Seize her. <laughs> Take one step in this direction and I will kick you so hard you'll pee blood for a week. Oh, really? Do you think you're man or woman enough for the task? Go and give the three of them the pounding they deserve. And when she's done, I'll give all you such a thrashing, you'll be crying for your mamas. Drakis has revived Lashes and pushes him towards Lysistrata. Go, go get her. Nicodiki and Criddly leap at Philurgis and Lashes, who shriek and run to cower in the corner. This is a fine display of masculinity. Apparently you have little contact with your people, sir. Women today are liberated. We're not the little dolls and bound house slaves of yesteryear. We are passionate. Oh, yes. Passionate for boozathons and all-night boogaloos. It's no use talking to these mongrel mutts, sir. You see how they treated us? Call me a mutt again one more time, mister, and see what happens. Yeah, call me a mongrel mutt and watch me munch and maul. Mm. Oh, they are rabid for sure, your honor. Best to use the soft voice. Please, for our sakes, find out what they want. They they might run amok any second. Drakis, go join those other two spineless worms and let a real man handle the situation. Now oh, here, look here, Liz Estrada. I'm a reasonable man. What possible purpose was there in taking over the club? I take away the club, I take away the power. No club, no dalliance. Dalliance? No tete-a-tete, no hookup, no mambo-jambo, no making whoopee. I don't quite understand. No Congress, no conjoining, no biblical knowledge, no making of the beast with two backs. <laughs> no, really, uh... In short, no sex. What possible purpose could that serve? Well, it's the power we have. That, and the finances the club provides. Well, you, you can't take money off of other people, that's, uh... Business? Uh, no, that's something else. I mean, when someone else does all the work and you take all the money, that's something else entirely. It's called... Uh, Plundering and war? No, uh... Hmm. I think you taught us too well, Your Honor. We know what it is, and it's ours. Now look, I have a city to run. Oh, we will do that for you. You? Yes. We are going to save you from yourself. Sacred cow's cud? I don't want to be saved. Then it is vital that we save you then from this hopeless war. Now look here. We will not relent until there is peace. That is our demand. There is no compromise. I'm about to blow my gasket. That's the problem, isn't it? You men with your puffed up chests, your bloated egos and bullying ways. We women have had to learn how to soothe and surrender, how to nurture and find the middle way. (laughs) We are our country's only hope. If I lose my temper, you'd better watch out. If you lose your temper, you will have more to lose than we will. What? Listen and learn. For too long. You have asked women to just sit silently while you sent our husbands and sons away to war. For too long, we've had to sit in empty homes waiting for you men to come to your senses. Well, no more. We will be silent no more. Maybe a good smack upside the head would teach you better manners. And maybe the bad end of a mop handle would teach you to address your betters. Listen, you beast. The war was bad enough. But our men come home to no work, to endless strife, to gang wars and poverty. If you just listen to us, the city, indeed, the entire country might be in better shape. (laughs) A fine day that will be when we let women run the country. I'd sooner put on a bra myself as let a woman take my office. We can arrange that for you if you so desire. We can get you stilettos and makeup. Why, I ought to... You ought to stand still and listen. You will not touch our Lysistrata, or we will rend you limb from limb. Now, I will separate your skin from your skeleton. And I, your noggin, from your neck. No, my friends. It's with Eros and seductive charms we will win. 
It is with love and peace we will wage this struggle. We will so arouse all of the men that they will have no choice but to submit to our demands. Fat chance. (laughs) Once the men have grown fat and swollen, we'll see who's right. But what is your plan? Well, women have had to make do. I mean, it's the men who take by conquest. You make no sense. It's simple. A child could understand it. (laughs) Then explain it to me. Women have to mend. Whether it be darning socks or sewing a button or knitting a baby's cap or the thread gets tangled while stitching a quilt for the winter, women make do. And that's how we will end this war and the fighting. So you're going to end the war with needle and thread, yarn and cloth. Give me a break. If only you had half the sense that a woman does, you would know how to run a government. (laughs) This is too much. Uh, Please enlighten me. (laughs) Well, every household has a limited budget. You spend no more than what you have and you save for rainy days. Oh, you make it sound like it's so simple. It's not that hard. Because we have so little... Women have always had to prioritize. I have to decide between new earrings and feeding the babies, out go the earrings. If clothes are dirty, we clean them. We don't just go out and buy new ones. If a task is too big, like a quilt for winter or a large dinner for church, we pitch in together. The same is true of government. Do what you can for yourself, but if the task is too big, make sure that everyone works together. Make no enemies that you don't need to make and keep all the friends that you can. Don't buy anything that you can't afford. Clean up everything that's dirty. Make sure the garbage gets thrown out. Children and anyone else who can't take care of themselves come first. And everyone else needs to take care of themselves or go to bed without supper. How much more simpler can it get? You talk a very fine game, but you know nothing that a man does of the burden of war. Yeah, I thought you were foolish. Now I suspect you're evil. Women bear the greatest burden of all. I am mayor and member of the- We give birth to the sons who in our eyes are still the little boys on our knee. We see them brought home in flag draped coffins. We cry night after night for what? It's the media. And then as widows, we sit alone with children to care for and an insufficient pension with which to get by. It's an honor to die for one's country. Don't give us the old dulce et decorum est pro patria mori. You should read Wilfred Owen. Tell that miserable lie about death and honor to the widows and orphans you leave without so much as a thank you or a crust of bread. I insist you give up this silly venture. We will not give in. Unless the men give up the war, unless the men give up the fighting, they will not touch a woman. We will not caress or kiss. We will not breathe soft words into their ears or so much as paddle their palms with our fingers. I'm done talking. Officer! Hipponax enters. Yes, sir. Arrest that woman. Uh, What are the charges? I don't know. Make something up. Breaking and entering, for starters. Drakis gave me the key. He what? Drakis gave the key to the club in the VIP room to me. Drakis? Did you give her the key? Well, sir. What do you mean? Did you give her the key? Well, not, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? We, you see, we were, we were drinking and, uh, well, things, um... What, man? What? Well, sir, things were, um, she, she took advantage of me. Ah, shut up. Can't you keep anything zipped? Officer, arrest her. Uh, for what? For creating a public nuisance and indecency and disturbing the peace and yada yada and so forth and so on. You catch my drift and and words to that effect. I'm not sure under what section to book that, sir. What do I pay you for? Arrest her. Arrest all of them. Arrest them and we'll sort it out later. Yes, sir. 
Stop. Yes, sir. No, uh, ma'am. You may think you have what's left of the law on your side, Your Honor, but I have something else. Every attorney in this town is in my pocket. Besides... Drakis also blurted out the combination to his safe in the VIP room. What does his safe have to... The safe Uh with not only money, but an interesting collection of balance sheets. Drakis. Balance sheets. Oh, and a very fascinating collection of photographs. Drakis. Apparently... All kinds of things went on up there in the VIP room. Drackies! You know, I never knew how good you looked in leather and feathers, Your Honor. (laughs) You said you burnt all the negatives. I did, um, sort of, burn some, maybe. And Officer Hippanax, you are truly amazing. (laughs) I would think that snorting that much lady snow would cause a man's head to explode. Oh, and magenta is definitely your color. Thank you. You left those photographs of me in the safe? I've got to protect myself. My club. I'm a businessman. You're a coke-addled, grease-oiled, stick insect. That's what you are. Do you know what kind of position you have put me in? The positions were, I must say, very impressive. No one would have ever guessed how flexible you are. No, 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 look here. No, you look here. You know our demands. Why don't you go to... Why don't you go ahead and just die? What? You provide nothing of use to the world. You make nothing, produce nothing, nourish nothing, and heal nothing. All you do is send off other men to die so that you can be fat and rich. Rhodope and Stratalis toss down toilet rolls to Lysistrata, Nicodike, and Critoly. They then take their buckets and douse the mayor with water. This is an outrage! No, this is your preparation for your journey to the other world. Nicodike and Critoly seize the mayor and Lysistrata begins wrapping him in toilet paper. Hippodax! Brothers! Come to my aid. But she's got the pictures. We'll all go to jail. <laughs> we'll wrap you mummy style and send you off like a dead pharaoh. Close your eyes, Rar. It'll all be over soon. Don't beat me, please. We'll do anything you want. You can't do this to me. I'm... I... Mrs. Strada <laughs> has wrapped his mouth shut. <laughs> I surrender. I'm changing sides. I want to be a woman. Let's have a, a proper funeral procession. Officer, you lead the parade. You all bear the body forth and let the rest of us show the mayor the respect that he has earned. The women of Athens force the men to help lift the mummified mayor. Rhodope and Stratalus follow behind with brandished mops as they circle the stage in a procession. Lysistrata follows last in line. Passage of time. Lysistrata, Marina, and Kalaniki enter through the club's main entrance carrying bags of supplies. Oh, really? Lysistrata, you must tell us what's bugging you. Something's on your mind. We can tell. Our plan has been in effect for a month now. I don't need a calendar to tell me that. What do you mean? I got a biological alarm clock, and it's ringing. We, we could be close to victory in our cause, but, and yet I fear. What do you fear? Well, it's more than a fear. It's a certainty. What is it? I could tell you in one word. I think I can guess. What? Our women. Tell me. Our women. Yes. Are horny. Well, oh. duh. <laughs> it has been a month. Mama needs a little something, something. Mm-hmm. You know, one tried to bribe her way out of the VIP door with a bag of chocolates. <laughs> and last night, I caught one trying to shimmy down a drain spout. And this morning, I found one stuck in the ventilation shaft. 
Ooh, stuck in a shaft has such a pleasurable sound oh. to it. You are no help. Look, there goes one now. Nakodaki is sneaking out of the VIP door. Oh, Lysistrata, Nakodaki, <laughs> Marina. Look, I'm sure you'll understand. I just remembered I, I left the bed unmade. Uh, you know, how it torments one's mind to have an untidy house. Uh, I'll, I'll just I'll scurry back home and take care of the bedspread and be back in a jig. Lysistrata takes her and pushes her through the VIP door. Whoop. We know what you wish to be spreading, and it isn't linens. A second later, Crittily comes out. <laughs> oh, Lysistrata, I was going to tell you, uh, we, we have to do something about the, ba- the window in the ladies' room. It's much too small. Why, a, a person can hardly breathe. And we say size doesn't matter. Too small, you say? Not planning an escape for a rendezvous, were we? Oh, how could you think such a thing? It's painted all over your face. Lysistrata wipes her fingers across Crittily's lips and shows her. What shade of lipstick is that? Take me now, Crimson. <laughs> Lysistrata takes Crittily and pushes her into the VIP door. She then turns back to Kalaniki and Marina. You see what I mean? And I thought I had a bad. <laughs> what are we going to do? Rhoda B comes out of the VIP room with Stratalis in tow behind her. Stratalis is wearing a fake mustache and men's clothing. Lysistrata, you'll never believe it. You're right. I'm not going to believe it. This man thing has somehow snuck his way into the VIP room. I'm going to take him out and give him what's coming to him. Is that so? Uh, God is my witness. So... You snuck into the VIP room, eh? What's the matter? Can't you talk? Oh, so the cat got your tongue? Or are you the, the strong and silent type? Watch out, I told you it wouldn't work. I should have played the man. Both of you, shameless minxes, get back in there and don't let me catch you slinking out again. Things are getting desperate. I'm afraid we're going to have a mutiny on our hands. Well, you can't expect us to hold out forever. We have needs. What are we to do? Desperate times call for desperate measures. It's time we took our plan all the way to the max. You don't mean... Mm -hmm. No. Yes. I am afraid it's time for Operation Blue Balls. Oh, not Operation Blue Balls. It's Mm -hmm. cruel. It's horrible. We have to go out and seduce one of the men and get them so worked up and excited that when we turn them down, the pain that they will feel will be indescribable. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It has to be against the Geneva Convention. We have to do it. We haven't got a choice. But which which one of us will have to commit such a heartless torture? The task, dear Marina, will have to fall to you. Why me? In the first place, your husband is one of the last young men left in town. It's true. If you weren't such a friend, I'd be jealous. And in the second place, he's also one of the most influential men in town. If he surrenders to our will, the rest will follow. This too is true. Men are like lemmings. One leaps. The rest leap right in, whatever it is. Mm Mm-hmm. And in the third place, despite the outward appearance of a straight-laced kindergarten teacher, if rumors are to believe you are the foxiest hot mama that ever strutted across a dance floor or starred at a mattress polo. (laughs) No, it can't be. (laughs) Yes, yes it is. Oh, I can't deny it any longer. I like it. I do like it. I like it. Yes. Oh, the wonders never cease. (laughs) So I saw your husband earlier today, and while we were out put purchasing supplies, and he said he wanted to speak with you. I told him no, but then suspecting that we might need you to step up the pressure, I told him no again. (laughs) And being a man, he's sure to arrive any minute now. Your mission is to engage his desires, to inflame his passion, and to so engorge his lust for you that he will be near erupting. And at the moment his Vesuvius is about to discharge, you will deny him and then demand that he direct the other men to defer to our declaration. Are you up for the task? 
more importantly, is he up for it? <laughs> I will sizzle and steam and make him squirm. <clears throat> Good. Kalanicki, you and I will take the groceries and supplies up to the VIP room and observe hidden from above. And you'll find all the weapons you need for Operation Blue Balls in the storage closet behind the jukebox. I'll be back in a second to get your husband stirred up for the operation. You can count <laughs> on me. Mm. Lysistrata and Kalaniki pick up the bags and exit to the VIP room. Marina goes to the storage area next to the jukebox to get ready. After a moment, Kinesius enters to the club's main entrance. He paces about excitedly and then calls out. Marina! Marina! Where are you? I, I demand you come out here right now! Lysistrata enters from the VIP door. <gasps> what are you doing here? I came to speak to my wife. I told you no! I am a man. You say that as if that's supposed to mean something. It means I don't have to listen to you. Oh, does it now? Yes. Who are you? Oh, I am Lissa Strada. So, you're the one who started up all this trouble. N what trouble? Well, you look like a businessman, are you? I happen to be one of the most successful businessmen in the country. Thank you very much. Then you should recognize my plan for what it is. It's business and nothing more. Call it a barter, if you wish. So you want something, we want something, <laughs> you pay, and we'll deliver. You don't know very much about business, little lady, or the law of unintended consequences. For your information, your little plan has thrown a monkey wrench into all commerce. Men and their libidos really do make mountains out of molehills. I wish that were the case. As a businessman, let me tell you something. There is one thing that sells above all else. One thing, and one thing only. It isn't the salesman, it isn't the product. It's sex, little lady. Sex sells. And when there is no sex, nothing sells. From, from Rambler Roadsters, to Remington Racers, to Ron Ricardo Rum, to Right Guard Deodorant. Your little scheme is get, uh, to make men give up fighting has led to the end of an, almost all commerce. It's a disaster. As a member of the National Chamber of Commerce, I can tell you that we consider you public enemy number one. You may end the war we're in, but you have also put a stop to people buying stuff. And that is just un-American. In city after city, all across the country, except for groceries and a few medical necessities, all of their purchases have ground to a halt. The, the shops are empty. Mail order catalogs collect dust. And we aren't even thinking, of, we are even thinking about canceling Christmas. It ain't Christian, I tell you. You can you, you what, what do you have against Santa Claus? I see. Now I demand to see Marina. And who are you to be making such demands? Not that it's any of your business, but I am her husband, Kinesius. You? <laughs> yes, me. You are the godlike Kinesius? What are you on about? Well, I should have guessed. <laughs> the the proud-like chin, the luscious hair, the glistening skin, the bulging manliness. <laughs> I I should have guessed at once that you were he. I was who? Kinesius. Yeah, that's that's me. Oh, Kinesius. Oh, a name that throbs like Ravel's Bolero. Oh. Really? Kinesius. Oh, the face that launched a thousand slips. Slips? <laughs> Lingerie, you sexy beast. Me? Do you see another Kinesius in here? Well, I suppose there should be some truth to that. Marina moans your name in her sleep. She does. I mean, of all the women, she is the one I'm most afraid will break our vow. She has such desire for you. You don't say. And the other women here are envious. I mean, day after day, she's bragged about your prowess as a lover. Well, modesty forbids that. The quality that of I... your caress. I do uh, work out. 
and your kiss is sweeter than wine. <laughs> she had such a little tattletale, I really must. She has spoken of you with such vivid, erotic detail that the other women here have spoken of their desire to share just a little of the Kinesius' touch as well. Have they now? Oh, but Marina is so consumed with jealousy for you that she declares that she would tear out with her teeth your intestines if any female dared to glance at you twice. So. Well, we wouldn't want that now, would we? <laughs> no. And so it is with great regret that I leave you to her. <laughs> you handsome, big hunk of a man. Well, you, you don't have to hurry off so quickly, really. Lysistrata exits through the VIP door. Meanwhile, Marina enters from the storage area next to the jukebox, dressed to kill. Not on my account, because well, I'm sure there's nothing that can be, so to, so to speak. Anasius. Marina. Who were you talking to? Uh, no one. Anyone. Myself, actually. I was, I was musing to myself. About what? Uh, about you. About me? Yes, about you. It is time for you to stop being such a silly little thing and come home right now. Why should I? For one thing, the house is a mess. Laundry stacked up everywhere, and, and I'm tired of frozen dinners. Then I suggest you get a maid. A maid couldn't take care of our little boy. What do you care about our little boy? He wants his mother back. He cries at night because you're not home. How much more would he cry if he were killed in a war? Marina. How much more would we cry if the fighting never ends and we lose our own child to another senseless war? Marina, just look at this picture. Don't you love your child? How can you ask that? Do you? I... Come home. Do you? Do I what? Do you love your child? Of course I do. What color are his eyes? Blue. Blue-ish. Okay, they're brown. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. You don't know what color they are. You should be certain. No, Marina. You don't want me back. Of course I do. Look at me. I want you badly. Don't touch me. Please, just for a day, even? Not until a treaty of peace is signed and the fighting ends. Come home to me and I'll talk to the mayor and we'll work on that treaty. Treaty first. Then I'll come home. But getting a treaty together is so hard. It looks like that isn't the only thing that's... Just Hard. the sight of you has me wanting you. <laughs> well, oh, I have to confess I have been wanting you too. So, why are we arguing? Let's get it on. No, I made an oath. Treaty first. <laughs> Can I just have a little taste? Just, just a first base. First base? Maybe second? Well, maybe a little. Oh, yes. But... Not on this cold disco floor. Let me get us a blanket. Uh, okay. Just, just don't be too long. <laughs> You're not too long. You're just right for me, baby. Marina dashes off to bring back a blanket. Above, Lysistrata and Kalaniki watch with the women of Athens. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Kinesius, you are going to score today. She comes back with the blanket and spreads it on the floor. There you are, my little love dumpling. Lie down. He lies on the blanket. She begins to lie next to him, but stops. What is it? No. No, not like this. Yes, yes, indeed like this. No, no, no. My little pookie wookie needs a little pillow willow for his head. No, really, I, I am quite I'll fine. I'll be right back. She sashays off to get the pillow. She's gonna kill me. I'm gonna explode right here like a mushroom cloud. Marina comes back with the pillow. She plumps it up and places it beneath his head. There you go, honey bunny. Now isn't that better? Yes, much better. Now come lay down here next to me. Oh, I love you so much. And I love you too. Now get down here. I love you so much that I want everything to be perfect. 
Perfect. I forgot my perfume. Perfume. I know how much you like it. I'll go get it. Really? I can do without? I know how much it turns you on. She exits back to the storage area by the jukebox. Turn me on. I just want to get it on. Oh, my aching... You know what? I'm in agony. My wife is driving me mad. I'll never walk the same again. She comes back with a spray bottle and begins spraying perfume everywhere. Oh, baby. Do you know how much I've missed you? Yes. <laughs> I... I... <laughs> I I imagine. Yes, I've missed you. And I've missed you. It's been so long and so hard. You're telling me. I want you so bad. I want you right now. All we need now is some music. What? You know how I love to move to the groove. Please! Marina punches up a tune on the jukebox. She begins a teasing dance number. Suck it to me. Suck it to me. Marina grabs the pillow and blanket away from Kinesius. She walks away from him towards the VIP door. Wait wait a minute. I I ache for you. I know, baby. No, I mean, I really, really ache for you. I'm in agony. Then I suggest you get the boys to stop fighting. What? You know your duty. But... No duty, no booty. But, sweetie, sugar. You can't sweet talk your way out of this. No peace, no peace. No treaty, no treats. You know what we want, sweetie baby sugar plum pie. She exits through the VIP door. Kinesius practically crawls towards the door as Drakis enters. (laughs) Good gosh, Molly. What's wrong with you, Kinesius? I'm in agony. Are you swollen? That's an understatement. Well, where does it hurt? Here? 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 Stop touching me! I'm only trying to help. Then go and get the mayor for me. He's on his way. We have to do something. Well, you're his chief advisor. He needs you. The word is that the Spartans are on their way. That too. <laughs> the mayor enters with his posse of men. Theseus, what's the matter with you, man? Get it together. We, we have a crisis on our hands. Oh, what are we going to do? These crazy women have us at our wit's end. I'll do anything to stop this impasse. Lysistrata enters. Anything? You. Lysistrata. Get her. Seize her. Oh, you first. Uh, Taking me will accomplish nothing. The women are united. She's right about that. You know our terms. Do you really expect peace to break out like some kind of rainbow? I do. That's a fantasy. An endless war isn't? It's the law of the jungle. That's right. The way of the world. Our ancestors left the jungle thousands of years ago. Look. And the world is changing. Well, Missy, you can live in the neighborhood of make-believe with rainbows, but for your information, the Spartans are on their way here. Their women want peace, too. Oh, yeah? Have you seen their women? 
Harold, a Spartan, enters. Yo, my name's Harold. Oh, no. They're here. Oh, hide me. Oh, what the heck? Hi, Harold. What is it you wish? I come here with my main squeeze with news from Sparta. Your main squeeze? Yeah. Lampito. Lampito is here? In person. First, though, is the mayor here? Uh, uh, I'm the mayor. Give me five. Up high, down low. Wah! Too slow. <laughs> You're uh, limping. Yeah, well, that's kind of why I'm here. I'm afflicted. <laughs> why are you here? Well, all the Spartan men are afflicted, and word is that the men here are similarly afflicted. I can vouch for that. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, brother. We shuffle around bent, doubled over, like we was carrying bowling balls on the ends of each finger. And you feel like you're about to sneeze and someone clamps your nose shut so everything just explodes in your ears. Yeah, like you were dancing the bump with a wood shiver. <laughs> like, you, like you had a rabid badger in your shorts. Yeah, like you'd gone wading through an alligator farm wearing an inner tube made out of turkey sausage. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, exactly like that. And our women would not give us the relief we need unless we made a sacred promise. The truth is, I am here to bring you a pledge from the Spartans, but it is really Lampedo who should deliver the news. Where is she? Ladies and germs, I present to you guys the most wonderful babe in the whole wide world, the incomparable Lampedo. Lampedo, my Spartan sister, what news do you bring? The best news imaginable, Lysistrata. Your plan spread like wildfire. <laughs> From town to town, city to city, there will be no more fighting, no more war. Is this true? <laughs> Tell him, Harold. Spartans will never again fight with our brother Athenians. We like fighting. That's a fact. But we like, f <laughs> uh, remember, you're to mind your manners and your mouth. Right, right. Sorry, sweetie. We like something else more. <laughs> and what about the war? We were more successful than we ever dreamed we could be. It started with just saying no to sex with our husbands and lovers. That one little no grew to a hundred other no's. That hundred grew to thousands. If someone wants you to send your child to boot camp for an illegal and unjust war, just say no. If someone wants you to work in a munitions factory, there's not enough money in the world, and you could just say no. There's no one to staff the draft boards, no one to man the recruiting stations, no one to work the weapon factories, no one to sing battle anthems, no one to ship the machines of war. For the women of this country, no means no, just say no. Ah, sisters, come on out and greet our men. Ah, the war is over. You see, Mr. Mayor, rainbows are also real. Now, just a doggone- Shut up! Well, you still got a pair, your honor. Harold and Lampedo, welcome to our Club Acropolis. Brothers and sisters, soon our husbands, lovers, and sons will be returning from the war. Now, let us never forget those who will not be returning. Let us never forget those who have sacrificed for us. Let us never forget what this day has cost us. Today- the VIP room is open and all the drinks are on me. <laughs> but before we dance in celebration of our good fortune, I wish to present you a special surprise. Let us never return to the false gods of ugliness, strife, and war. I present you beauty, love, and most importantly, peace.
Awesome. Round of applause for the cast of Lysistrata. Thank you guys so much. That was, that was insane. So fun. I want to thank our whole production team, everybody working behind the scenes to put this together. Um, and I want to invite you to our talk back on Facebook Live. Come ask us some questions about how we put this together or about Lissa Estrada. Um, and we can also shoot some of those questions to Bobby Bell, who has done this adaptation. Bobby, thank you so much for letting us use your work. Beautiful. Yeah, a round of applause for Bobby. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Up next here at the Studio Theater, Tierra Del Sol's virtual play reading series, we have A Woman of No Importance by Oscar Wilde. That's going to be on May 15th. As always, it's a Friday at 1 p.m. So every Friday at 1 p.m., come and hang out with us. We love seeing you. We love creating these for you. Um, it's been such a blessing for us to be able to uh, see each other and create together during this time and to share it with you. So thank you so much for joining us. Stay safe and healthy. Be well. Uh, peace, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>